China is the main competitor to the US for global supremacy, but now the Eastern giant may be revealing the ace up their sleeve. America has always been a key figure in the marketplace for aircraft carriers, but China's latest development of a brand new Type 003 aircraft carrier for $9 billion may very well just be the thing that pushes China across the finish line first, securing its much coveted title of world leader. Aircraft carriers are already known for their ginormous size, so news of a fresh one off the production line almost sounds like a minor update. Indeed, China's previous two crafts had some peculiar starts. Number 1. Liaoning The first, the Liaoning, was originally built for the Soviet army until it was laid to rest at the start of the 90s. Its unfinished hull was later purchased by a Chinese travel agency, strangely enough, where it was towed from Ukraine back to the homeland to be modernized. Quite the fixer-upper. Indeed, its radar, electronics, and hull would go through a few refits, the latest being September 2018, despite allegedly being combat-ready earlier in 2016. Maybe we can't know if this is smoke and mirrors on China's part, but there are some cold hard stats available. The Liaoning displaces 66 tons of water, almost 40,000 more than the Japanese helicopter destroyer, and is nearly 60 meters longer. It may not be the largest craft in the Asia-Pacific, however, it boasts a formidable size advantage over nearby competitors by being 20 meters longer and 17,000 tons heavier. All that said, it falls well below the likes of the USS Ronald Reagan, which is both 60% heavier and 30 meters longer. You can't blame one for thinking the Liaoning was DOA. It certainly is hindered by its comparatively inefficient power plant and underpowered aircraft launching system, yet the middle weight is rewarded with a higher speed, perfect for faster targeting times as well as increased ability to outrun potential threats. On paper, it is not the most powerful vessel in the Asia-Pacific Ocean, but perhaps nimbleness is what China was aiming for. However, critics believe the Soviet power plant which it depends on for propulsions is likely suffering from poor design and maintenance, locking the top speed at 20 knots. Even if one factors in the advanced equipment, the range and payload is hindered by the lack of an aircraft catapult. This same key flaw appears on China's second aircraft carrier, the Shandong. Number 2. Shandong the Shandon is a lighter, meaner version of its older sibling, but this time is China-built and comes with a whole set of upgrades. It's expected to have a slightly larger air wing, a slightly faster top speed, and be able to displace slightly more water. But are these minor polishes enough to put the Eastern Giant on top? Some say yes. It is purportedly 10% smaller than the Liaoning, yet features the advanced Type 346 S-brand ASEA radar system. It may have a better optimized internal arrangement than the older AC, but it has a more limited refueling period, standing at 6 days at sea. There is every reason to believe that when it finishes its year-long construction in Shanghai, that it will launch with capabilities equal to the US's own naval force. Yet mysterious certainly sums up the development. Secrecy and spin is not far behind when it comes to army tech, especially with a state as elusive as China. Now, there is a new twist in the tale, as a brand new third carrier is in the works that will leave the previous two eating its dust. Number 3. Type 003 The Type 003 will not just be China's most technologically advanced aircraft carrier to date, it will launch with a brand new set of fighters of its own. But how does it stack up to America now, especially with crafts like the US Gerald Ford? Undoubtedly, there are similarities between the two in terms of tech, size, and air wing. China will naturally want to highlight these as the craft finishes its pre-deployment refit. After all, it already has a launch system which is similar to the Ford class of carriers. Plus, the fact its launch system skipped two generations, bypassing hydraulic and steam catapults in favor of electromagnetism, which has certainly helped China market their carrier technology to buyers like Pakistan and Turkey. America, by contrast, has been unable to transfer its tech to even critical allies. 
Is this the writing on the wall for American leadership in the aircraft marketplace? Or do American carriers do all the talking? India has had lots of meetings with the US Navy, monthly discussions in fact. Which is not surprising, given that the US Ford's launch and recovery system has already impressed the likes of France. Yet the timed launch of the Type 003 has blunted the geopolitical impact of the USS Ford. Even shipbuilding powerhouses like Japan and South Korea are keen to share tech, but have not yet publicly demonstrated interest in the US at all. This does not outright prove that China could achieve maritime dominance in record speed, but the fact that the possibility is not immediately off the table has made some anxious that America is failing to accelerate navy building among friends. They might not need to chase any leads though. Even the US Ford had difficulty utilizing the launch system that Type 003 now uses, so maybe the years of experience using them will be what turns buying nations off of China and back to America. If China can't master its new tech, then it will have bitten off more than it can chew. Even if that were to pass, it still wouldn't be clear sailing for American powers. Another hurdle in the race for dominance will be when China officially unveils the fighters which are to be housed on the Type 003, the J-15, and J-35. After all, what is an aircraft carrier without aircrafts, so maybe this is the ace up China's sleeve. Fight or Flight The J-35 is another milestone in China's long-term pursuit of a blue water carrier based naval aviation capability says retired U.S. Naval Intelligence Officer Captain James Fennell. This fighter alone could be the thing to eliminate the last advantages that the U.S. Navy enjoys. Though the aircraft has existed in various iterations before, it was a reverse-engineered copy of the Russian Su-33 carrier fighter. This latest version sees a reconfigured wing and elongated fuels optimized for a lower radar cross-section and boasts a dual-wheel nose landing gear with a chin sensor turret. The Shenyang J-15, aka Flying Shark, was initially rumored to be a semi-stealth variant, but later reports indicate this aircraft is based on a Russian-designed Su-33, but fitted with domestic radars and weapons. Yet it still relies on the ski jump mechanisms. This clearly reduces the effective range of the J-15, so does this mean that the Type 003 can accommodate this craft successfully? Perhaps China is planning some refits to this craft, but nonetheless, it leaves a question mark over the Type 003. Granted, a twin-seat variant did make a maiden flight in 2012, and China isn't shy of brushing off older models. This theme of mixing the old with the new remains the consistent theme throughout China's naval plans, so perhaps this is the winning formula to steal market share straight from under America's nose. A mix of innovation and refurbishment has done wonders for their image, but with tech going the way it is, China doesn't have much choice but to play catch-up. Both of these two mighty figures will operate on the Type 003 when it finally launches and utilizes the new catapult launch system, the very system that eluded the Liaoning and Shandong and kept China one step behind. These, as we know, were both equipped with the rather outdated Soviet ski jump system, so to see China following suit with America's direction is more evidence that this tech race is entering a dead heat. Still, there are reasons to suspect that China may have the edge. Take the clear images of the J-20B which emerged on the Chinese internet last October. What became clear is this is a variant of the Chengdu J-20. China's fifth generation aircraft is going to be the world's first two-seat stealth fighter jet. This multifaceted approach to innovation, development, and marketing stands in stark contrast to America's tired and tested, bigger wins. It is easy to see how any other emerging superpower will view China's output, from new tech to refitted jets, as something to be marveled with. But whether or not this approach will outdo America in the long term depends as much on America's ability to turn nations back to their market leadership. Be sure to place your bet in the comments below. China's mend and make do method versus America's build bigger better. Updates on this story and all things military tech related will come in the future, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single thing. And of course, be sure to leave a thumbs up to show your support for the nation's sharing tech. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.